Uh, welcome, guys. You are right now in our uh, career night that we're going to host. We host annually every year. Uh, this one is designed specifically for agriculture, food, and natural resources. And the reason we're here this evening is that we, uh, you as students and parents within 214 community, have an opportunity to learn about the career pathways and programs that we offer in our high schools. And we've assembled uh, some a panel of uh, specialists within our community and also within our uh, college institutions that are here to speak with you tonight about some opportunities that are here for you and that we hope you take full advantage of uh, as part of 214. So if I can get started, first thing I'd like to do is introduce everyone uh, right now on this um, Zoom call tonight so that you can have a better idea who you're talking with. And at the end, we're gonna give you an opportunity to also ask some questions of anyone on this panel or, or even ask, talk about a topic maybe we touched on that you have an interest on. Uh, so first off, I'm Dave Wiederzak. I'm the division head for career and technical education at Rolling Meadows High School. Uh, I'm familiar with all the programs across the district. So even if after this, you're like, oh, that's pretty interesting to me, but I have questions more so about another program, you can always ask me what that's about. I'm here for you to answer any questions because being in high school today is, is tougher than it's ever been for you high school kids. Uh, you've got a lot of opportunity, a lot of great opportunity and, and very little time. So we're here to help you in the best way to navigate through that. Uh, but go ahead, uh, next person on the list, Brian, if you'd like to introduce yourself. So uh, Brian Clement, I'm the horticulture department chair at uh, College of DuPage. Um, a little bit of background, uh, I taught high school uh, agriculture for 13 years uh, before uh, going full-time at the college. I've been at the college about seven years uh, full-time now, and I was a, a part-time adjunct faculty for about seven years also. Uh, I grew up on a farm uh, downstate near Springfield, Illinois, um, and I've been in the Chicago area for about 15 years now. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Michelle Motlowitz, and I am the director at River Trail Nature Center, which is in Northbrook. I have been a naturalist at River Trail Nature Center for 20, or with the Forest Preserves of Cook County for 29 years, I'm about to um, end my 29th and start my 30th year. I started as an intern while I was in school and worked my way up through a variety of different um, positions, including part-time naturalist and full-time naturalist and the assistant director and then the director. And um, I am from the area, but I will tell you one other fun fact is that my first degree is in fashion design and I decided to go back to school for science. Thank you, Michelle. Dana. Okay, my name is Dana Sievertson and I'm with Agnes Morjanowski. Um, together, we are commissioners at the Prospect Heights Natural Resources Commission in Prospect Heights, Illinois. Um, the uh, commission is made up of seven commissioners that are all appointed by the city. Um, and we uh, uh, govern and organize a, a grassroots volunteer organization that is responsible for the natural areas of Prospect Heights. You want to add to that? Yeah, my name is Agnes Wojnarski and I'm the chairperson and co-founder. We founded Prospect Heights Natural Resources Commission in 2014 and we are all volunteer. I'm actually a family, uh, family medicine doctor by trade, but every other moment of my life, I am uh, working for the natural resources of Prospect Heights. Um, and we have a very strong volunteer organization, internship program, and we've really been able to um, restore and protect a lot of the natural areas in our city. Great. Thank you, Agnes. Um, I'm Diane Marion. I'm with the Cook County Farm Bureau, and we are a non-for-profit organization in Countryside, Illinois. Um, we are here to teach individuals in and around Cook County about agriculture and the importance to all of us, even if we can't see it around us necessarily, how important it is, and to also reinforce all the career opportunities as well as scholarships and internships that are out there for students. So I'm excited to be here tonight. I was excited when Rolling Meadows started your program and I hope that we can engage some of you in 
agriculture and all that it holds for our area. So I've been here 10 years and we just celebrated our 100th anniversary last Saturday here at the Farm Bureau. So we've been here since 1920 and we hope to be here another 100 years. So I'm excited to share agriculture with all of you tonight. Thank you, Diane, for that. Kirsten? Yeah, hi. So I'm Kirsten Raver. So I'm the teacher uh, at Rolling Meadows High School who kind of runs most of these agriculture courses. Um, a little bit of background for me is I grew up in a farm out in Elburn, Illinois. Um, went to Geneva High School, so I'm familiar with larger schools. I thought um, for me personally, the biggest thing missing for me at a more urban school or suburban school was agriculture. So I was really excited when I found out that Rolling Meadows uh, was starting this program. So this is my second year at Rolling Meadows. Um, so yeah, so I kind of run a lot of these courses out of Rolling Meadows High School. I'm Colin Ewert, the D214 student. I got involved with this entire agriculture, food and natural resource group through the Prospect Heights Natural Resource Commission with while being supervised by Dana and Agnes as an internship. I'm a senior at Buffalo Grove High School. You can see I have tennis rackets. I'm engaged in swim, Spanish club, graphics, and a full list of other things, but that's me. Perfect. Thank you, Colin, for doing that. Um, so anyways, guys, the reason we're here before we deep into, into a detail of why we're, what we're gonna talk about the reason is, is some of you are probably thinking, so agriculture, food science, natural resources. There's a reason why you're here tonight, and they're probably all great reasons. But so often, as I was telling the group before we started, why agriculture? And agriculture is embedded in all of our communities, from the clothes we wear to the food we eat to so many of the fine details around us that agriculture is critical. Even though you don't see farms all over our communities, agriculture is everywhere we're at. And because of that, uh, District 214 and specifically Kirsten at Rolling Meadows High School have started an agriculture program to really build up those skill sets and to give you that knowledge because there are some amazing careers within these industries. Uh, but before we you know, go too far, I just want to give you that premise so you had an idea that, hey, we're not talking about making farms and, and tractors and equipment. We're talking about the bigger picture of environmental science, natural resources, agriculture, and, and food science even. Uh, and we're going to talk about that tonight. So we don't have a lot of time, but we're going to get after it. And uh, I'm going to start with the panel asking some questions. Now, if you're here to listen to this panel tonight and you have a question, we're going to save time at the end for you. So don't feel like that when it's over, we're just going to end this. We're going to hopefully have enough time for you to answer your questions. So here we go. Uh, I guess the first one's coming, coming to you, Dana. Uh, you're the first one. This is the first question coming to you. Okay. Uh, you talked about natural resources kind of quite a bit in your experience with Prospect as well. What training is necessary and, and important for these students to understand going forward if they want to obtain a position like yours in the future? Well, um, <clears throat> I, I think, uh, you know, certainly grounding yourself in the sciences, the natural uh, sciences is, is a good first step. Um, you know, we're a grassroots organization, so um, not only are we involved in the environmental, but we also, uh, you know, spend a lot of time working um, uh, with people uh, in the in the community on, on all the various projects that we have. Um, I think, um, you know, getting out and getting the hands-on experience is, is certainly very, very important. Um, with our program, <clears throat> um, we, uh, we always have a very large component of education. So with our uh, paid summer intern positions, for instance, um, the first hour and a half of every day for those interns is in the classroom with Agnes. Uh, Agnes is a, uh, knows probably 600 species, uh, you know, uh, front, front to back and um, <clears throat> with the uh, scientific names and the um, uh, common names. And she spends an hour and a half with uh, students at, or with the interns uh, every morning and then all day on Wednesdays and then um, um, Fridays half day. Um, so there's a lot of um, uh, focus on education. By the end of the, like for instance, with a summer internship, of, uh, an intern can expect to know uh, two to 300 species of plants. Um, if you're thinking about going into policy, there's no better way to start than to getting a practical education in terms of uh, being able to identify plants, um, 
to understand what best land management practices are because <clears throat> understanding all of the mechanics of how this all works leads to much better policy. So um, I think that's a, a pretty good spot to start. Agnes, do you have anything to add? Okay. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you for, for that explanation. Uh, the next question I have, uh, I think best lends itself to Diane here. And, and Diane represents a, a large amount of people, a large amount of area, I should say, because Diane's in fall, involved with the Cook County Farm Bureau, which, which stretches over Cook County, which is a massive county. But I guess, Diane, the question coming back to you are, what are the certain skills or attributes that a candidate <coughs> have in high school to excel in a field like yours, agriculture? Well, in our field, there's so many different areas you can go into that I think a key component is making sure that you embrace any opportunities for speaking engagements, for public speaking, as well as oral and written communication skills. Because whether you go into an engineering field, if you go into mechanical engineering or electrical engineering, and any of the agriculture engineering majors, you even though you might not be doing public speaking, you need to have really good communication skills. Um, with agriculture, you don't have to necessarily be a scientist to go into the field of agriculture, which is um, something that a lot of students don't realize. So let's say you're really into um, foods, foods and nutrition. Um, dietitians are very important to our industry. Um, when you think about the food that you eat, um, some of it's fresh from the farm. You pick up an apple, you eat it, but there's other foods that you need people to develop recipes and um, the ability to put together food, whether it's creating um, the food blends at a Tate and Lyle type of organization right out by you, or if it's in a restaurant. So there's avenues for people who love food. Um, also, there's a lot of opportunities if you're in the graphic arts area, because if you think about it, anything you buy is usually in a package that has a design on it. So if you are not um, a great mathematician, you might still have an opportunity in agriculture. So one thing that I wish I had known when I was in high school or college is to um, get experience in all different clubs and organizations and agriculture has so many different majors and the opportunities for students right out of high school with two years of college or with a college degree are vast in our area but you need some kind of awareness of what's out there. And so I encourage you to join clubs, organizations and get involved seeing um, Pearson to find out what Rolling Meadows or what your local high schools have that you can take advantage of. All right, thank you, Diane. And I guess if I were sitting, if I were these kids right now, 16, 17 years old, maybe getting ready for college and they're trying to figure out what they wanna do, what would you say is the hottest, newest, up and coming career need within the agricultural field? Well, that, that's a tough one because there's so many. Um, you know, the whole area of genetics and um, plant science is very important because as the environment changes, we are gonna need to create different ways of growing food and a big surge right now that I'm seeing, and I, I think uh, Brian might have some comments on this as well, is the surge in indoor um, growth of food. Um, you can pass by a lot of buildings in Chicago and you will not know what's going on in there, but throughout the United States right now, Kentucky just has a new facility, Ohio has a new facility. There's many new um, agricultural organizations that are building food, raising food indoors. So hydroponics, aquaponics, and all that goes with that. And Brian, I would defer to you if you have some thoughts in that area as well. So yes, uh, our hydroponics class that we offer is very, very popular. Um, a lot of students are wanting to take that. So we're seeing a lot of uh, students coming into the program, a lot of younger students out of high school. Uh, they want to grow their own fruits, vegetables, or or uh, help grow those to feed the world and stuff. Great. Great. I would also say, I'm sorry to interrupt, the sustainability is huge right now. So um, pu public planning and sustainability is a really important part of natural resources and um, agriculture. Yeah. Thank you. And Michelle, the next question is coming to you because when you first came on the call earlier before everyone arrived, you had mentioned that your path of education changed drastically. I, I caught that real quick. 
Can you talk about being that you're involved with Nature Center and, and natural resources? Can you talk a little bit to this group of kids about if you could go back to high school, what would uh, what would you tell yourself that helped you the most to get in the position you're in now? Well, just being open to to follow my passion and not stay with something that I'm not feeling um, is the right field for me. Really important to to be open to new things, trying different things. Somebody else has already talked about volunteering. Huge. Volunteering is very important. Gets you an opportunity to, to get your hands into the field and try something out uh, without a whole lot of, um, don't have to put a lot of time and money into that. And, um, and definitely don't burn any bridges. Every network is a good network for you at one point. So be honest and, and be somebody who can be counted on and trustworthy and um, show up for your, for your volunteer opportunities and learn everything there is to know. One of my favorite things that was taught to me was learn everything there is to know and then don't take any of it too seriously because it could change in the next minute. So I think that's a perfect open. segue uh, to Colin because he certainly was the embodiment of that. Um, with our internship, he, he's just been like uh, a model citizen. It is, it's been incredible. Thank you. And I wanted to add to what Michelle said, because she's completely right. Every step of this internship process that I went through under Dana and Agnes's um, Prospect Heights Natural Resource Commission internship, it was because I engaged the community. I actually started because as a cup, I was through Cub Scouts, I was loving nature, went to Boy Scouts, <clears throat> ended up deciding I want to get Eagle. I got Eagle in February, and I said I want to stay engaged in the community. So I got reminded by one of the adult leaders that there's this service project that Dana and Agnes were having, and it was just planting along a slough uh, to help reduce erosion, but that was the stepping off point for me to having this internship. And 30 hours later, I'm here because of just, well, more than 30 actually, just because I got engaged with the community and we've gone beyond local and we've started to like, it's just mind boggling on how getting engaged has gotten me this far. And I think that that is completely true, especially when I'm in clubs like um, the Interact or Bison Service Club, my local uh, community service group and Harper Promise, which is another the local community high school or community college, Harper College has this uh, program where you should engage in the community and you can get help with tuition because of that. And completely all of these, these things that just promote engagement in the community have helped me greatly because of it. Yeah. Colin, you, you're definitely one that took advantage of a, of a great program. And I guess for all the, the students that are out there, they're trying to figure out what they want to do in high school and where it's going to lead them. 214 has a program that focuses on internships. You're muted, David. There you go. Someone muted me. Uh, how, much, uh, how much did you miss on that one? <clears throat> uh, just you just start time. talking. Okay, perfect. Uh, so guys, I don't know where I left off, so I'll just, I'll back up quickly. Uh, 214 has internship programs for all different career paths that you may have an interest in. So, you know, just like Colin had said, he had an interest in uh, agriculture and natural sciences and, and signed up for one of these and was fortunate to be, uh, to be led by a great pair of, of people in a community. But regardless of its agriculture, or engineering or nursing, please know that in your junior and senior year, as, as Michelle had said, the most important thing you can do is network and get out and, and really try and make the most of a great situation. So no matter what you choose to do in high school, it, it, it's what makes you happy and it's your choice. But know that our district has internships for you so that you can further expand upon it. And, and there's a lot of great success stories, but unfortunately we could talk about that all evening long about kids that have made great choices and, and have really benefited from those. So thanks for bringing that up, Colin, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, I can add to that as well. The, um, uh, you know, when, when I look back, I, when I went to, to uh, college and um, uh, graduate school, I was uh, in art. I was a, a painter and a printmaker. 
um, fast forward, uh, you know, a few years, and I've been a, a, a creative director for uh, like 20 years now. Uh, Agnes is a, is a family physician. Um, those are our day jobs, but we come home and, and our real job and our real passion is, of course, the, the natural environment. And so you just never know what it is or where it's going to lead. But, all, you know, as long as you pay attention to what you're doing, and what you're feeling, I think ultimately you'll end up in the right place. Yeah. Uh, a great question came in from Ali just a second ago. Are internships still running right now? They are, uh, to the best of my knowledge, not. They're suspended for the short term uh, while COVID's here. Um, we have a lot of programs that have been affected, unfortunately, due to COVID. Uh, but we are making plans to get students back in the community as soon as it's safe. And uh, we are working with our business partners. So that's a great question, Ellie. Thanks for asking. Uh, we're going to shift gears a little bit because time is going pretty quick. And I'd like to shift it to Brian a little bit. Brian has uh, graciously joined us tonight from uh, College of DuPage County. And the reason we asked Brian here tonight is uh, we're working with partnerships with College of DuPage because they have some phenomenal programs in agriculture, Brian specifically to horticulture. And we invited him out tonight to talk a little bit about, you know, what do you do if you have an interest in natural sciences or food science or, or agriculture? What are those next steps? And since Brian's a, a looking to be a partner of ours and we we're want to work closely with him, we thought it'd be great information to let him share a little bit about his information and practices. So um, at College of DuPage, the horticulture department, we have approximately 300 plus students in the program. We offer about 50 different classes. Uh, we offer three degrees, a horticulture degree, um, a landscape contracting and management degree, and a sustainable urban agriculture degree. Uh, that's our newest degree that we just started about four years ago, uh, just because of the sustainable movement and the urban agriculture it was a very hot topic uh and it's been a very um sought after degree by a lot of students and stuff we also offer nine certificates in the program uh so students can come in and they can get a certificate or they can work towards a two-year uh, degree in horticulture um we are trying to work out uh, a dual credit agreement um, with rolling meadows uh, in sustainable urban agriculture uh, since uh, they started the program up there. Um, we have, I would say about 25% of our students in our program come from out of district. So we pull in students from all the surrounding counties in the Chicagoland area. Um, we have students that even from out of state that uh, come to COD uh, into the program and stuff. Currently right now, I think we are working with about eight or nine other high schools uh, that we have dual credit agreements with, uh, and those students are basically taking the high school courses and earning dual credit at the same time. Uh, so there's numerous, numerous job opportunities in the horticulture and sustainable urban agriculture industry and the agricultural industry alone. Um, we don't offer your typical agriculture classes um, at the college, but we focus more on the horticulture and sustainable urban agriculture. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brian, for that. Um, and, and with that being, uh, you know, obviously leading up to college, which is great if that's your interest, we wanted to give uh, Miss Raver, she's our teacher at Rolling Meadows High School, which by the way, you're all eligible to travel among 214 schools if you would like to pursue classes or programs. So Miss Raver's here tonight to talk a little bit about the programs in 214. Uh, specifically from the beginning, which is our ag bio, all the way up to what we hope to have is sustainable agricultural, uh, sustainable urban agriculture coming up soon. So uh, Ms. Raver, if you wanna talk a little bit about your programs and courses, uh, that would be helpful. Sure, yeah. So um, like Mr. Weider, Zach had said, um, the very beginning of our courses is agriculture biology. So it is the alternative to your biology credit. So you take that course and most of uh, you still get your biology credit through this course, but we look at things that are through a more agricultural lens, um, looking at plants uh, using our greenhouse that we have, looking at animal systems versus human systems, um, which kind of segues us into two different paths you can really take um, that we offer. So we have our food science path, and then we have a path uh, that's geared more towards animal sciences. Um, so when we look at is pulling this up for us right now. We yeah. have a food science path. 
Um, and so, like I said, you start with ag biology and then you go into food science, which is learning more about um, plant science, uh, plant systems, soils, learning um, the basics of planting and growing food in a greenhouse setting. Um, and then with that, it actually is awesome. It kind of partners with our culinary program that we have. Um, we work with the culinary, culinary program to uh, provide food for them. And it also gives the students in that culinary program a good background on how that food is produced and how different ways of producing food actually changes the flavor of that food. Um, and then you can also go into two different courses as well with that pathway, which is ag business, um, which does primarily a lot of the marketing for our greenhouse produce that we make and um, sustainable urban agriculture, which we are working with the College of DuPage on that one. Um, and then we also have our more animal sciences based pathway. Um, and those are our veterinary science courses. Um, so those courses are awesome for students who are not only interested in veterinary sciences, but if they're interested in anything between genetics, um, if they're interested in nutrition, if they're interested in anything that has to do with animals in general, it gives a great overview basic of um, how to work with animals, how to understand animal systems, um, and just the basics of animal care and um, kind of doing triaging or kind of figuring out what is wrong with an animal, understanding a lot of animal diseases and so forth. So those are kind of the courses that we offer currently with Rolling Meadows for the agriculture pathway. Um, there are also AP Environmental Science, which is um, a course that is part of that as well. Yeah. All right, perfect. Thank you for sharing that. And, and in addition to that, uh, like all other 214 schools, we also have projects such as the FFA, which is Miss Raver sponsors and advises. And also, uh, if can you talk a little bit about the dog dog after school training class as well? Because yeah, I think so, that you didn't you didn't speak of that I think a lot of people would find fascinating. Yeah, so I do um, sponsor FFA, which is a student led agricultural leadership organization that has a ton of volunteer opportunities with it. Um, and then we also do MAST, which is animal therapy dog. Uh, dog therapy training. Um, Mr. Wiederzak can speak on that as well. His dog is now um, a trained therapy dog. He took his dog through that program last year. Um, but we host um, a man named Jay. He is part of the mass dog therapy program. He comes in and he does training. So you can either be a handler or you can train a dog as well. Um, and we work closely with him. We learn a lot of basics on how to handle a dog safely, how to train a dog safely. Um, and it does a lot with hospital work. So right now that is on pause because we are not entering hospitals with dogs, um, but it is a great opportunity for students to work with dogs. Maybe they can have a dog at home. They provide us with dogs um, for students to learn how to properly handle a dog. They come out with the um, dog handling certification so they can handle any therapy dog um, part of that program and go to any events that host with therapy dogs. Thank you, Ms. Raver. Well, mm -hmm. uh, we have about 10 minutes left, so I, I'd like to open up the floor to, for kids to ask any questions um, and, and pertaining to any programs. And one, one question came across the chat. It was from Luke saying, I'm interested in marine life and fisheries. Is this the right career path for me? And I was wondering if anybody would like to address that. Sorry, I muted myself. I can talk a little bit about um, fisheries. I mean, marine biology obviously is going to be uh, not something that you would really do much of here locally unless you're working uh, for a zoo, a local zoo. But fisheries um, is, is a great field. Um, all of those kinds of specialties, obviously you wanna work with things in the water. Um, those are general biology degrees or specific degrees that you then um, would specialize further. Uh, most of those are not um, degrees that you would do something with a bachelor's. You would need to continue on with some kind of specialty, but really a lot of good entry level jobs with national parks and forest service and US Fish and Wildlife, state um, forest services, uh, county forest preserves, other local forest preserves have a lot of um, have a lot of resources for careers in fisheries. Is that helpful? Or was I supposed to talk more about um, 
what no, that's kind okay. of a job is. Okay. No, that's okay. Luke, if you'd like to unmute, did we answer your question okay? Yeah. Perfect. Um, if, if Luke, if you would, if you want to call me at River Trail, I can um, give you the numbers of our uh, wildlife and fisheries biologists in the forest preserves, and you can talk with them directly if you have other questions. Perfect. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. An another question just came through from Allie. Are, are there jobs that teens can get related to this career pathway? Uh, sounds like more so before, you know, before they graduate high school, but before college, are there any jobs that you're aware of that could help uh, these teens like Ellie out? Well, I know um, last year when I took some of the Rolling Meadows staff to some career sites in that area, we did go to Ball Horticultural, for example. Um, I do think they hire a lot of part-time individuals in the summer as well as into fall. Um, if you go to some of the local, like Gobert's Farms is out there in Barrington, they might also hire some people. Um, but I would encourage all the students, one thing to do to open up doors into this industry is to ask people wherever you're at, start conversations with people. So if you're going to a store, if you're going to um, any kind of industry at all, ask people, you know, how did you get involved with this? What training do you have? They, the more you can ask people in the industry, the more doors that might open. So there's definitely opportunities. I don't think during right now, but during the summer, there's definitely opportunities. Thank you, Dan. If, yeah. if you go to uh, our website, uh, it's www.cod.edu slash horticulture. We have a link on there with employment opportunities uh, and it talks about different career opportunities uh, in the horticulture landscape industry, the sustainable urban agriculture industry. Uh, we just had a career tree done with different types of job or jobs uh, in the industry. Um, so check that out because there's a lot of good information and stuff on there. The Thank Forest you. Preserves of Cook County has several um, high school positions each summer. And um, there are there are uh, student conservation association along with the friends of the forest preserve crews that do a lot of um, restoration work in the forest preserves over the summer and other special projects. We also have uh, at each nature center and throughout uh, different um, departments within the forest preserves, there are high school and first or second year of college interns that are paid positions. So just watch for those kinds of of opportunities on um, Forest Preserve River Trail Facebook pages and things like that, or give us a call again. Okay, uh, next question is coming to Ms. Raver. Uh, this question comes from Caden. What has the RMA, RMHS FFA done in the past two years? If you could talk about that involvement. Yeah, so last year um, was when we did most of what we were um, able to do this year, not as much. But um, last year we did a lot of volunteering. So we went and worked with um, the people who run Emily's Prairie. So we collected seeds out there. We planted those seeds um, in the greenhouse and um, learned a lot about um, uh, taking care of the area around there, learning about cons uh, conservation practices and with the um, stream that runs back there. We've also um, done events where we work with the high school students on um, doing various projects. So we did where we planted calming plants with other students. Um, we have where we've hosted mornings for teachers to kind of learn more about agriculture. We've done volunteer opportunities where we went and created a bunch of dog toys out of t-shirts, old t-shirts and donated them to uh, animal shelters. It's really what students want to do and want to donate um, or to do different work with. We leave it up to students because it is really a student-led organization. Perfect. All right, couple more questions here to wrap up with. Uh, this one's gonna be vet veterinary based, but it's uh, from Maggie. If I wanted to pursue a job in the veterinarian, would this veterinary sciences, would this be the right field for me if I wanted to pursue basically in the veterinary sciences? If someone, maybe Kirsten, if you, uh, Ms. Raber, if you could comment on that. 
Yeah, so these veterinary science classes are a great start to it. Um, so when you want to pursue a career in that, you'll more than likely be looking at colleges. But to take these classes in high school will give you a great foot in the door, um, not only when you start applying for colleges, but also just to give you a great background knowledge and a view into it. So if you're not sure about it, if you think this might be a career path for you, you're going to learn a lot about what happens in veterinary offices um, and learn a lot of what you need to know um, to kind of get started with it. So it'll give you a better idea of this, if this is a right career path for you, if you want to pursue college. Um, as a career path for veterinary science. Perfect. All right, Ms. Raver, you're getting another question here. Sorry, they're all coming at you. I'm interested in working within the National Park Service. What would following this path in courses uh, open the window to many jobs there within the National Park Service? I think these classes um, would give you a great idea of background knowledge that you need for these services um, and these job skills, but I do, also feel that a lot of these programs um, with Dana and Michelle would also give you guys a lot of great opportunities and background knowledge for this as well. Internships would be um, a lot of opportunities. And then if you take ag biology and environmental sciences, it'll also give you a lot of background knowledge that you would need for a career path in that. Okay. It depends on what you wanna do with the park service, by the way. Mm -hmm. There are lots of different jobs in the park service. Not every job is the same. Absolutely. Uh, question from Allie, what do environmental, environmental science do and what do environmental jobs look like on a daily basis? And I know that's an open-ended question, Michelle. So I don't know, if, same information you shared, but if you could talk a little bit about that. For me, Michelle? Yeah. yeah. I'm, more of, I'm more in the ecology end of things rather than the environmental end of things, but that's okay. Um, environmental sciences is, is a lot of... Um, sustainability and um, um, looking at how to solve problems that are created in a, in a safe and sustainable way for our world. Um, and what was the other was environmental sciences. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of engineering, environmental engineering uh, positions and, and uh, jobs and, and careers. Um, there are a lot of different um, things that have to do with public planning. And, um, but I think a lot of the environmental science jobs are, are focused in engineering and solving problems, especially if you like to do something that is solving a need and solving a problem. Environmental sciences is a great, is a great field for you. All right, well, we are all out of time. Unfortunately, I wish we had a little more time because questions are starting to flow in, but. We're unfortunately, we've got to go to another session, but thank you everybody for coming tonight. If you have any questions about the programs that we offer, I'm gonna put up on the screen one more time, uh, my contact information in just a moment here, sorry about that. Uh, I'm gonna share my contact information and also anybody on here because there's so many people with great information that it would be a shame that you didn't know who they were and you didn't have a chance to reach out with them. Uh, but if it's regarding any classes at, in your high school, District 214, please reach out to me. It's Mr. Wiederzak at the top or even Ms. Raver as well. Uh, you can find our, our email addresses on the school site for 214 or anyone I'm sure here would have no problem talking with you more about their, their careers and pathways and options. So please, um, you're surrounded by great people. Please take advantage of that. I mean that in the most positive way. And thank you again for coming here tonight.